If you have ever had the desire to get your fishing adventures on camera or just film to learn and improve off the water, this is the video for you. I'm gonna share with you every single tip and trick that I've learned in my 10 years of making fishing videos. That way y'all can go out there and make the best video possible, whether you're fishing from the bank, a kayak, a John boat, or a bass boat. My name's Tyler and let's talk about it. Another giant, another giant. Look at that y'all. I can't believe what I just caught. Yes! So here's the structure of this video. First, I'm gonna talk about the purpose of your filming. Why do you have cameras while you're fishing in the first place? Second, I'm gonna discuss cameras and accessories that you need on the water. And lastly, I'm gonna show you what every single angle looks like when you are attempting to film your fishing adventure. So let's start with the purpose. I really think the most important thing before you ever go to the store and buy gear is developing your purpose for being on the water. And that is why you're putting cameras up in the first place. You as the angler and now a videographer have have to decide if your purpose is to go out there and just film for the sake of pure enjoyment and maybe to show your friends and family, but you're not worried about posting online. That's purpose number one. Now, purpose number two is people that are intentionally filming for the effort of putting videos online to grow a following or just to post so your friends and family can see that don't live you know, in your household. So think on that question for a little bit. We're gonna come back to that here in a second, but I wanna talk about camera gear next. If you're just beginning your fishing and filming adventures together, I would recommend no other camera than an action camera. And the one that I think has been battle tested, at least in my 10 years, as well as most other anglers out there is a good GoPro. And the reason why I love a GoPro so much is because it has the features we need as anglers. You know, you watch the, the action camera, you know, hype videos when they release a new camera and it's so cool. They've got skydiving and they've got whitewater kayaking and, and mountain biking. As anglers, we don't need that. I just need a few things which I will describe in this video. And in my opinion, a GoPro has them all. Now, which GoPro should you get? you should get the GoPro you can afford. I still know fishing YouTubers, big hundreds of thousands, millions of subscribers that still use the Hero 4. This is like a seven year old camera at this point. That's how good it still is. Now is the 4 the GoPro that I use in my videos? No, I like the GoPro Hero 10. And the reason why is because the quality, of course it's seven years newer, it's a better quality camera in terms of video quality. And I think the audio is just as good, if not better in the camera while it being waterproof as this one is while not being waterproof. So I think the Hero 10, if you can afford it, the nine is good as well. It's definitely an investment, but if you're just gonna get one camera, uh, trust me on this, all you need is a GoPro. Now, because filming fishing videos is my full-time job at this point, I have a whole bunch of cameras. I've got two big Sony cameras. I've got four or five GoPros and a drone as well, and the camera that you're, you're viewing this on right now. But you do not, I repeat, absolutely do not need a big camera like this to start filming your fishing. There are tons of big channels that still go with like a phone and a GoPro. So I'm gonna circle back real quick to the question of purpose. If your purpose in filming is just to, you know, learn from your hook set or your casting form to, to you know, learn and improve off the water, or just to show your friends and family, maybe share some stills on social media, audio is not really that important for you because you're not posting it anywhere, so how, what do you care if people can hear what you're saying on the water? But if you do intend to post clips online, whether it's YouTube or just social media in general, and you want people to be able to hear what you're saying, what's going on on the boat, on your kayak, on the bank, audio is infinitely more important than video is. And I might sound crazy, but I would rather watch a 480p, just like you're seeing on the screen right now, a video clip with really good audio than I would watch a video that is 4K Ultra HD with just crummy wind filled audio. I'm gonna teach you guys more about audio as we get up and fish with all the cameras up, but if you just want guaranteed good audio every single time, I would recommend buying a lavalier mic. This here is the Tascam DR10L. I believe it retails for $200, which is not a cheap microphone. There are cheaper options, but I just want one that I can guarantee is gonna get the audio every single time. This is a, like I said, lavalier mic that is wired. It's got one wire here, and you can either clip this to your T-shirt or use some stickies, some Rycote stickies, 
I will have all this stuff as always linked in the video description uh, to stick it to my chest underneath my shirt. That's what I'm gonna do when I get up and fish here in a few minutes because I can guarantee with the wind fuzzy on or it's stuck to the inside of my chest, no matter how windy it is, within reason, the wind noise is going to be eradicated and you guys can hear what I'm saying. You're gonna see tons of examples as I switch from camera angle to camera angle of how bad the wind noise can get and that's why good audio is so, so important. It just takes a little bit of extra time in the editing phase uh, to link up the audio that's recorded to the micro SD card here to the clips uh, from your main camera, whether it's a big you know, DSLR or a GoPro. But as soon as you learn how to link your audios quickly, your videos will exponentially rise in quality because the viewer can actually hear what you're saying. Now, one last thing I wanna teach you guys about your cameras before you start filming is the quality in the frame rate. Let's just stick with a GoPro for, for this example here. If you're filming on a GoPro to catch fishing action, you should have the quality in 1080p. You don't need 2.7K. You definitely don't need 4K or above. That kind of quality is just gonna take up storage on your SD cards and your computer's hard drive. And so I film in 1080p and the frame rate, that means how many times the shutter is clicking per second is 60 frames per second to slow the speed down to 50%. So if I have a fish jump near the boat or I just wanna show a cast in slow-mo or a, a hook set in slow-mo, I can do that in 60 frames per second. And if your GoPro has super view, that means the widest possible angle, no matter if you're on the bank, the kayak or the bass boat, super view is the angle you want to be in. So all the time when you see a camera on my chest, it's in those exact settings. All right, so we have every single camera angle up. We have my Sony camera here on the back. I'll explain the mount that's on here in a second. I've got the chest mount, I've got the console GoPro, and I've got a GoPro on a pole in the, uh, the seat post mount on my back deck of my Skeeter. So take a good look at all the uh, all four angles here. The one angle I, I never use because I just don't really like the way it looks, kind of gives me a headache, is the hat cam mount. I think the only fisherman that can really, you know, best utilize the head cam mount is a kayak angler because when you're, you know, down there in the water, my good buddy Andy Yak Angler, for example, and you're constantly looking around for, you know, casting at a little brush pile over here, it's a lot more like omnidirectional, whereas on the bank or in a, in a bass boat, you kind of are making casts usually in front of you. And so that's why I have most of my favorite camera angles in the back of the boat pointed towards the front or in the back of the John boat pointed towards the front. Now, how are all these cameras powered? My GoPro here on my chest is powered via a big old power bank here in my pocket that I keep wired all day with the battery out of my GoPro called Phantom Power that allows it to run all day long. And yeah, it's a little bit cumbersome sometimes with a spin rod, the butt kind of can get stuck and, and snag the cable here, but that's just part of the game. I want to make sure I'm not having to replace batteries four to five times throughout the day. So I have what's called phantom power running this all day, as well as the camera back there. It's on a Tado Designs pole. This pole here, I'll, I'll walk back to you guys, uh, is designed by Bassmaster Elite Series angler Matt Heron and his son. All you got to do is screw it into your seat post mount or kind of wiggle it in with a, uh, with a wedge, and it will be so sturdy. I know I've seen videos of Hunter Shryock going down the lake, you know, in South Dakota with huge waves. It's almost like the GoPro is not moving at all. So I would highly recommend if you want a GoPro angle in the back of the boat that again, can see everything that happens up here. I mean, I don't care if your rod tip is high, if your rod tip is low, if a fish jumps back here, you can see it on a camera back here that you can't on some of the angles up here. So I use like this Sony angle right here. I use this because it is such high quality uh, and I have a really good system for the camera to sit on. But if you don't have a big camera and you just wanna run a GoPro in your bass boat uh, specifically, this pole is a really good one. I will leave it linked down in the video description. And it also runs via phantom power here from a power bank that you can actually just put in one of the, la the, the hatches back there. So that's that angle. I'll talk about my Sony here in a second, but the one angle that I'm really not a huge fan of, to be totally honest, is the GoPro on the console. And I really don't like it because it is so low to the boat deck and I think there's better options, especially if you have a bass boat, you can put your camera on the back deck and uh, it'll have a much wider viewpoint, get more things on camera. And I, I don't know, I just think the console mount's kind of overrated in you know 2018. So I would not recommend the console mount. Matter of fact, we're gonna turn it off. And the last mount that I have here is my Sony camera. I can put a GoPro on this same exact area right here, but I have a very special system that my dad and I 
have actually built into every bass boat that I've owned, and that is a custom installed monopod onto my driving console. So every year I drill two holes into the side of my console. I put a little metal plate with a rubber backing on the inside, and uh, with some bolts, with some nuts on the back, I uh, mount the bracket, and then I screw on a monopod clamp. It can clamp basically onto any uh, circular pole of any kind, and I've got a high quality Manfrotto monopod with a Manfrotto matching head, and that head style of, of what sits on the bottom of the camera can actually also clamp onto my tripod. So if I wanted to, you know, take the camera off of this mount here, I could take this camera off and then, you know, set up my tripod for a different angle and the camera clips right into my tripod. Now, I know a lot of you guys might not be comfortable putting holes into your Bass Boats console, but it's way better, in my opinion, to have that for not only sturdiness of the camera, I mean, like you guys can see here on the chest mount, I'm moving this camera quite a lot. And one of the reasons why it is so sturdy is not just because it is hard mounted, it also has a piece of plastic uh, to be the size of the base of my monopod, and that is screwed into the floor of my Bass Boat. And so I have basically two points of contact, one in the center of the monopod holding it sideways, and the other one on the bottom, making sure the foot can't swing left and right. And having your big expensive camera or GoPro on that is so much easier on a fishing day and more safe for your equipment than having a, a, a tripod. Because if I was to take my, my tripod here and you know extend all the legs and try to fit it here in the center of my boat, and then you hit a big wave, say bye bye to your cameras. So that right there is my bass boat camera setup. Now, I did say this video also applies to you guys in kayaks as well as John boats and bank fishermen. So let's talk real quick about the different types of angles for you guys who fish and want to film in those aspects. When I'm filming in a kayak, I usually have two cameras. I've got one on my chest and I've got one on the front of the kayak. And the reason for that is because I want to use my GoPro as my main audio source. Or if it's windy, my audio source will be my lavalier mic microphone, either, like I said, clipped to my shirt with the windsock or stuck to my chest as it is today. I know tons of kayak anglers like Greg Blanchard and Christine Fisher, they use a camera behind them on their kayak, kind of on like a, an L-shaped mount pointed back you know, towards their shoulder. I would love to start implementing the usage of that mount in my videos. I just haven't bought one yet. So the problem with that one though is that you're not going to get great audio, which again is why I have a GoPro on my chest or the actual audio source. Because if the GoPro is behind you, and if it's, if it's windy at all, the GoPro in front of you on the kayak on the nose pointed back will not be able to hear you that well. And like I said, if your purpose is just for having fun, that doesn't matter. But if your purpose is for posting online, you need good audio. So get yourself one of these. Now, when it comes to a John boat, I'm going to have my GoPro chest mount on for sure. And then maybe if I have an extra GoPro, I'm going to either hard mount a, a GoPro mount onto the boat or just use one of the clamp mounts here and clamp it onto the side of the John boat with, of course, the camera angled into the boat. That way, if it falls or gets knocked, it doesn't get knocked into the water. So John boat's pretty simple. And then lastly, from the bank, you guys have seen in almost all of my 100 ponds videos i have the chest mount on and it's because it's so simple when you're bank fishing sometimes you're you know hopping over trees or fences and you're trying to weasel your way into a backwater area and bringing along with you a tripod to get a second angle is not really always practical now i try to do it as much as i possibly can but if i'm fishing somewhere that's really hard to get to or it's a long walk i'm just going to bring my gopro chest mount make sure i have it angled what I would say is kind of like a, like a one o'clock if you're looking at the clock here, and you just gotta get used to on the chest mount, your hand kind of touching the camera. As long as you don't like whack a hook set and really get the, the camera like pushed upwards, some anglers definitely can't film with a chest mount on, and I understand that. But that's enough talking, folks. I say we uh, get to some fishing so you guys can see how every angle uh, looks on a bass boat. So the first angle I wanna focus on is the chest mount, talking about the pros and cons of the chest mount. Now here is the natural chest mount audio in a little bit of wind. I'd say it's blowing, I don't know, four to 10 miles an hour right now, which is definitely not a lot, but as you can tell, that's enough to kind of give it some, some not pleasant wind noise. So we're gonna go back to the, uh, 
the lavalier mic, and as you can tell, it got considerably more clear. Now, there's quite a few pros of having a chest-mounted GoPro camera for filming your fishing. The first of those being that you can really kind of point it anywhere you want, and it's not going to be super shaky like a head camera could. You know, a head camera, you can go up and down or left and right. A chest mount, you can really only go left and right, so there's, there's less uh, axes for the camera to make someone sick while watching and so that's why i like the the chest mount i think a chest mount is relatively simple to wear uh, and like i said only takes a battery pack to keep it running all day now there's one major con to a chest mount and that is that if you're fighting a fish and either your hand or your arm or something is blocking the camera you're not going to be able to see a fish jump you're not going to be able to see a blow up and so that's why i've kind of learned to keep my hands down on the bottom side, even when fighting a fish. That way, if a fish jumps right here, of course, I could get it on this back camera right here. That's why I run two different cameras or on the camera way in the back. But if you're just gonna run one camera, I would recommend running a chest mount. Now you can also run just one camera in the back of the boat. I see most people when they're fishing a, a bass tournament doing this. The problem is, can you guys back there hear what I'm saying? That's right, they can't hear me at all because the wind noise and I'm too far away from the camera. The same thing applies to the console mount. If I'm fishing from the console mount and I turn this way and try to talk, I'm gonna turn this camera's audio on right now. You couldn't hear any of that, could you? No, you couldn't. That's why you need an audio source on your body. And knowing this about the console mount brings me to the camera in the back of the boat or the back of the kayak, for example. If the camera is that far away, the cons are you're not gonna hear much audio at all, even if it's dead calm, unless you make like a loud exclamation noise or boat flip a big fish and go like, let's go. The, fish be the camera back there is not going to hear you and your buddy talking up here or a joke you say or a tip you give. And that's why the chest mount or a lavalier mic is crucial. I, I can't overstate this. But the pros of that camera back there are that you can see everything. And that's a camera pro that this center camera right here, this monopod, does not have. It can't quite get everything. Now when it comes to this camera, what lens do I have on it? If it's a GoPro, it doesn't matter. But a big camera, the focal length of the lens matters. And I have a 16 millimeter. So it is right now at its widest point. If I zoom in, that is 35 millimeters. If I zoom out, that's 16. So imagine Imagine in your bass boat, in the center next to the console, how much room do you have on the deck? I've got a 21 foot Skeeter. I have a pretty dang long deck. So a 16 millimeter lens allows this much vertical space and this much horizontal space. I want a 12 millimeter, but I just, I gotta go buy the thing. So for right now, a 16 works great. I can see almost everything. And the, like I said, this is my full-time job. So I'm gonna put a nice expensive camera here on the center to get the best possible quality. Cause you guys can definitely tell the difference here on the side-by-side -side between the back camera and the front camera, or I should call it the center camera. So one more time, let's go with all three camera angles. We got the chest mount, the console in the center and the pole in the back. I think these are the three best camera angles, and if you can combine two of them, if you've got two cameras, I would highly recommend the chest mount and a raised mount on the console or a pole all the way in the back with a GoPro on it. And never forget how important audio is. Now, if you're thinking right now, Tyler, should I film my fishing adventures? The answer unequivocally is yes. Now, if this video piqued your interest, I made a video about how I actually edit my fishing videos. I will leave that up here in the corner. If you're trying to make better videos to post online, that will help you right there. My name's Tyler, and we'll see you next time right here on TRF.